Niggas don't buy his for a moment of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Father, we want to thank you for this hour and for this moment, Lord God. Father, we want to thank you, Lord God, for closing us in our right minds this morning, Lord God. Father, it was you, Father, Lord God, that woke us up this morning. By your grace and your mercy, Father, Lord God. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, from thinking of thinking about us, Lord God, to wake us up this morning, Lord God, to bring us here this morning, Lord God, to give you praise and honor this morning, Lord God. Father, we ask you, Lord God, that you give us a change of mind and heart this day, Lord God. And Father, Lord God, whatever be, whatever it is that's bothering us this morning, Lord God, Father, Lord God, we ask you, Lord God, that you open the doors, Lord God, for us, Lord God. And Father, Lord God, that you may see us through, through all our trials and tribulations, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Father, you know us, Lord God, better than we know ourselves, Lord God. Father, you know what we need, Lord God, before we need it, Lord God. And Father, we ask you, Lord God, that you may step in today, Lord God, and give us the thing that we need today, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, that we may grow spiritually, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, for what you're about to do, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Oh, Father, we ask you, Lord God, to bless today's service, Lord God. Bless the youth today, Lord God, wherever they might be, Lord God. And Father, that you may continue to send them a word, Father, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. But Father, we know, Father, Lord God, that your word is not just for us alone, Father, Lord God, but your word, Lord God, is meant for everyone, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Let every ear, Lord God, and let everyone that has an ear, Lord God, let them hear what you're saying today, Father, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Let no heart be hardened, Lord, be hardened today, Lord God. Let all envy and strife, Lord God, be set aside today, Lord God. Oh, Father, Lord God, that your love and your kindness and your peace, Lord God, may rule the day in our hearts, Father, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And we thank you, Father, Lord God, for what you're doing right now, Father. If there be any, Lord God, that are sick among us, Lord God, and those that may be laying on their sick bed today, Lord God, that you may send them a word, Lord God. Bless them, Lord God. Show them your grace and your mercy, Lord God, today, Lord God. Let them know, Father, Lord God, that you are a merciful God, Lord God, and a loving, kind of God, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. For, Lord God, there are some, Lord God, that desire and look for signs and wonders today, Lord God. Give them that desire that they're looking for today, Lord God. For, Lord, you continue, Lord God, to show us mercy, Lord God. You continue to show us signs, Lord God, that you you still live today, Father, and we thank you for it, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And Father, most of all, Lord God, we thank you for your son, Lord God. We thank you for his death and his resurrection, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Oh, Father, we ask you, Lord God, to open our hearts today, Lord God, for the man of God, Lord God, that his words, Lord God, will not fall on stony ground, Lord God, that, Lord God, that it may apply in our hearts and our minds today, Lord God, and let us be doers of your words and not just hearers only, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord God, for the word that's coming across today, Lord God, in Jesus' name, amen. We now have a scripture from our deaconess. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Let's pray for Deacon Courtney. He's got issues. <laughs> and we're coming from Genesis 19, verse 1 to 8. And there came two angels to Sodom at even. And Lot sat at the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face towards the ground. And he said, Behold now, my Lord, turn in, I pray you, unto your servant house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early, and go on your way. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the streets all night. And he pressed upon them greatly. And they turned in unto him and entered into his house. And he made them a feast and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they laid down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, 
come past the house round about, uh, old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called upon Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. And Lot went out at the door unto them, and shut the door after him, and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known men. Man, let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they unto the shadow of my roof. May the word be a blessing to the hearer. We now have an announcement by Sister Nadine. Praise the Lord, everybody. <coughs> Our church announcements are as follows. We have Sunday school every Sunday morning at 9.30, morning worship service at 11 a.m. We have our singers ministry every third Monday night at 7.30, Bible study every Tuesday night at 7.30, uh, taught by Pastor Boone. Wednesday is our church fast day. And then Thursday nights we have our spiritual growth class at 7.30. And Saturday mornings we have prayer at 6 a.m. Um, next week is our women's day. And we have a speaker coming in next Sunday. So um, we're just asking that you come prepared. You want to preach Deacon Johnson? <laughs> <laughs> we just ask that you come in, you know, with a mind and a heart to praise God like we do every Sunday, okay? So next week Sunday, we're looking forward to our guest speaker and our Women's Day. We're going to have a good time in the Lord. Amen? Those are all the announcements at this time. Nobody 
But if it's all right to pass, I'd like to get a testimony real quick. All right. Um, about five years, four years ago, y'all know we bought our house. Um, beautiful 2,000 square feet, three-story townhouse. Pretty much brand new. 100% um, financing, which this was after the bubble. So that was pretty much not going on anymore. So that was God right there. Um, then we found a little home that had Chinese drywall. But they fixed it for free and gave us money. That was God again right there. <laughs> Two years later, we sold the house, thank you Jesus, for about twice what we paid for it. So that's all God right there. So I mean, it's just a testimony of the testimony with this house. God has definitely blessed us over and over again when it comes to this house. Um, we put the house on the market on Monday. Monday night we had an offer. And then Tuesday we were bottled with a counter offer. And there we go, we sold the house. So that's all God right there. More than God can, it's always God. And my favorite scripture is, you know, he can do all things, he can do what? He can do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think. God has done that over and over and over again in my life. I am a testimony to that scripture right there. Because I, could have, you couldn't have told me when we bought the house that he was going to look at stuff from double than when we bought it. You couldn't have told me that. So I know that's God. And I know we're moving up. We're moving out. <laughs> we're moving to Miami. Um, higher rent. That's all right, because that's God preparing us for a higher mortgage, and we're ready to buy again. So that's all we see it as. So I thank God for that. And I'm going to definitely introduce our pastor, our leader, our example, our father. He's a great grandfather. He's a grandfather to my son. He's a great example of a father. He's a great example. Of, he's a great example of a husband. My husband looks up to him and tries to mirror him. Um, so, y'all know we're under great leadership. Not good leadership, we're under great leadership. Not only does he preach the word, but he lives the word that he preaches. I've hung out with him outside of church, and I've seen his life, and it's, it's what he preaches. He doesn't say one thing on the pulpit and live a different lifestyle. Y'all know y'all under great leadership. So, I'm ready to introduce the son and present to others our only, our great pastor, <laughs> Pastor Samuel D. Dunn Sr. Who that? Who that? Who that? <laughs> amen, amen. Beautiful devotional services. I, it's, God really moved in the house this morning, didn't he? Come on, give him a praise. Come on now. You, you felt like he moved this morning. Give him a praise. So glad to be in the house of the Lord. So glad to be one in the number, some folks would say. God is our Savior. He's our Lord. He's our God. He's everything to us. Amen. I'm so glad I got to know him before too late. Ah, uh, it's just a blessing. You know, I, I, I've known the last person entered into the ark. I can kind of know what he felt like. Knowing what's getting ready to happen and knowing that he had the opportunity when he got in. And when the door was shut, they don't read it in the Bible, but I believe somebody was shouting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I believe somebody was shouting. I believe somebody was praising God because I'm in the ark. And that is a blessing all by itself. Amen. And we're going to, cause I, I feel like the Spirit already has moved here. <laughs> we're going to give you a little word today. It says it's youth day. You can get something that the youth should know by heart. If you have your Bibles, let's go to the book of 1 Samuel, 17th chapter. We're going to read from verse 43 to verse 51 of 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter. Familiar story. Been taught. Since I was in Sunday school. And it reads, And the Philistine said unto David, Say, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with a staff? And the Philistine cursed David by his God. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air, to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, with a spear, 
and with his shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air, and to the wild beasts of the earth, and all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with swords and spears, for the battle is the Lord, and he will give you into our hands. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hastened and ran towards the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slang it, and smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon him, his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone, and smote the Philistine and slew him, but there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran, stood upon the Philistine, took his sword, drew it out of the sheath thereof, and slew him and cut off his head that way. And the Philistines saw their champion was dead, and they fled. Let the church say, Amen. Let's remain standing. We're talking about defeating the oppressor of God's people. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you for this moment and for this hour, Lord, to be used as an instrument in your hand unto your glory, unto your praise. Lord, open in us words of wisdom, not of understanding. Let your word go forth. Let it build up. Let it convict, Father. Let it heal. We pray and we ask this all in Jesus' name. And we're thanking you for what we're going to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. We give honor the Spirit of Christ. We welcome those who are on new stream that's watching us. We welcome each and every one of their respectable places who came out to be with us today in the house of the Lord. Defeating the oppressors of God's people. One thing God wants his peoples to know is that any enemy, no matter who it may be, no matter what way he may come, no matter how great he may seem, can be defeated. If you even say that sometimes when situations and things come up in your life where it look like it's not can be defeated, but look like it's going to whip you or destroy you, always keep it in your mind, any, I'm talking about any, enemy can be defeated. Any oppressor, any person, any trial, any evil spirit can be conquered. God wants his people to know that it doesn't matter what the battle may be, you're going to win. If you ever find yourself looking like there's no way I can overcome this, I beg to differ if you would just think about who's on your side. In every battle that God has sent his peoples in, he's always give them the assurance that I will be with you. And it didn't matter whether the enemy that was coming against them was greater than them. God always looked at whose side he stood on. It looks like God didn't even ever even consider what was coming against you. You, you look at the circumstances and you, and you look at the situation and you consider that they, they got more men in their armies. Yeah, they're smarter. They, they seem to be stronger. They seem to be more adept. Got more weapons than we do. But God never considered any of those things. There are things that come to our lives that presses us, that causes us to worry, 
causes us sometimes to lose sleep and causes us sometimes to go around with fears and discouragements in our life. And that ain't nothing but the enemy. We know that. Ain't nothing but the enemy. But the enemy will use whatever he can to try to defeat us. And he comes at us in all different directions and all different kinds of ways. But it doesn't matter. You can defeat your every enemy. David and Goliath is a story that's written to let us know that whoever our oppressor is, with God's help, we can defeat our enemies. When you look at this story, you look at the defeat the that's coming up against David. And you think about it, it, it I mean, the Bible gives a description of Goliath. It will look like something that will just overwhelm you. Because why? This guy is described as being nine feet tall and nine inches. This guy has a has on a, a, a metal coat that weighs a hundred and twenty five pounds. This guy got a spear that has a spear in it that weighs fifteen pounds. And this guy is a mighty warrior, somebody that's trained, somebody who know how to fight, somebody who used to whooping up on people, <laughs> who, who, who makes it seem like he's invincible. Yes, yes. He puts an imposing figure before God's people, and he makes it seem like there's nobody on your side that can beat me. I, I, I sometimes I wonder, do you feel like there are some things in your life that you can't overcome? Do you feel like there are certain things that comes up in your life that you can't conquer? Because the devil will make it seem, he, he, he puts out a, a, a picture that makes it seem like this cannot be defeated. This cannot be conquered. And the Goliath put that imposing figure in front of God's people, and let me tell you something, it had a great effect. Because the Bible says that when Goliath came forth, they ran back. They were scared. They were discouraged. Because when they saw him, the Bible says he brought great fear in the people of God, and they retreated. Let me tell you something. With fear comes humiliation. With fear comes defeat. When fear comes a struggle, the first thing that the enemy wants to strike in you is fear. Because he, he don't want you to have any faith or any courage. One thing about fear, fear destroys your faith. And I'm going to tell you something else. Your faith causes your prayers to be answered. And if the devil can strike fear into your faith, then your prayers will not be innocent. Faith causes your prayers to work. Fear causes your faith not to work. And so you want to put fear in that. And, and, and I'm going to tell you something. Can you see some of the things that the devil brings into your mind? Some of the magical things he said is going to happen to you just because your car stopped on the side of the road. He said, look, there's a rape that's coming. Oh, look, somebody's going to ride all these things. He puts it to your mind to make you feel fearful. The thing is that the worst is about to happen because there's nothing going to work for you until you deal with that fear. And we have to deal with situations that are going to always come up in our life. Always things are going to happen. But you can't let fear overtake you and overwhelm you. I don't care what it may look like. I'm, I'm thinking about some of the things that have happened in my life. And, and the devil have brought thoughts into my mind to make me think that it's over with, Sam. It ain't no use to pray. It ain't no use to hold it on no more. You might as well just give up and just let it be. You understand? But one thing I know as a child of God, you got hope. Always got hope. Always got help. Don't never think that you don't have hope. And don't never think that you don't have help. Because as long as God is on your side, you got hope and you got help. 
and that's the best thing that, that, that can help you in a time of a storm, in a time of trouble, is to know that I got some hope and I got some help. Good gracious of the life. Just the thought of that will bring you through some of the roughest times in your life. I got some hope and I got some help. The Bible says he's a very present help in a time of need. <laughs> what gets people in trouble is that they don't know about the hope that you have. And they don't know about the help that you have. They got to go a little, a little bit more stronger. And he said, I give you power over all the works of the enemy. That's another thing. You, you got authority over whatever is trying to oppress you. Whatever is trying to bring you down. God said, I've given you the authority to over coming to conquer it. That's another thing. I got authority. This cannot hold me down. This cannot keep me in the home. God has given me the authority to come out of this. And if you keep that in your mind, out there on the battlefield, and when you're facing what seems to be insurmountable, so what seems to be undefeatable, then you don't realize it's just a word away from victory. Because I got help. Huh? I got hope. And I got authority. And as long as I got that, it's just a word away from victory. Goliath felt good about himself. He felt that there's nobody can beat me. How many of y'all know, you know how the devil attacks so many of God's people? He feel good about himself. He feel like, hey, they don't know the word of God. <laughs> they don't even know the blessings or the power that God has promised them. He feel like if they knew who they were <laughs> and whose child they were, <laughs> I would never touch them. But because they're walking around and don't know who they are, I'm going to toss them to and for and carry them around with every wind and doctrine. I'm going to have them full of fear, have them full of discouragement, have them down, depressed, because they don't know who they are. It's bad not to know who you are. Bad not to know who your father is. Bad not to know what your father has already done for you. I heard on the news the other day, it said this man died. And he died as a homeless man. He, he was uh, out there in the peddler in the street, they said, but when they did a, a research of him, they found out that, you know, he had $470,000 in the bank. And they say, he refused to use the money. And all he did was have a few dollars in his pocket and he died of natural causes. Somebody say, did he not know about the money? He says, yeah, he knew about the money, but he wouldn't use the money. He let us stay out there in the streets, in the elements, and believe that this was his kind of life, then to get what was promised to him and given to him. A lot of God's people are like that. They live in like bombs. They're walking and carrying themselves as if they don't know who they are or what they possess. And the devil is just hanging around. He, he, he got them blind to the fact that, hey, God ain't going to help you. God is not going to deliver you. God is not going to bring you up. And I'm going to tell you something. Don't listen to the devil. Jesus said the devil is a liar. First thing you gotta say is, 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 who is this talking to me? And when you realize it's a devil, all that number but a lie. So all that is, is just a lie. And, and the thing is, this here. The Bible lets us know there are going to be times in our life where we're going to be shift like wheat. The, 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 the Lord will allow things to come into our life that will shake us like wheat. He, he told Peter, and Peter was boasting and thinking that he had it all together. He said, Peter, he said, Simon, Satan has desired <laughs> to have you. In other words, by himself, probably would ship some things up. But he said, he wants to shift you like wheat. 
want to shake you up. And I, I'll tell you, sometimes the devil shake up some of God's people to a point where they can't even come back to church. They can't even pray anymore. They don't even run to the Bible anymore. They, the devil just shook them up so bad, they don't forgot who Jesus is. They don't know who their Savior is. They don't know nothing about the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't never let the devil get you to a point where you're so shook up, you can't say, Jesus, help me. Don't get to a point where you can't say Jesus. I, I, some folks say, I can't say nothing but Jesus. They just say Jesus. He don't work just like his name being called. And so the thing is with this here is that the liars felt confidence. And for 40 days and 40 nights, he, he came out there and he challenged them and he challenged them. And, and one thing about your oppression, they ain't going to run away from you. They ain't going to leave you. You're going to have to face it. You don't have to somehow go up against it. Even though you feel like you're not qualified, even though you feel like you're able to, it's not going to leave you. One thing about the devil, bro, he got you in his grips. When he got you in fear, he don't leave you. He tried to destroy you as much as he can. And so the thing is this, for 40 days, they kept running away from him. They kept uh, getting back away from him. But you know one thing about God? God don't anoint you for no purpose. But God placed this anointing on your life. You may not know what it was at that moment. You may not know why it was done to you that day. But God had a purpose just for you. And that's why he anointed you and placed his Holy Spirit in your life. David had been anointed by God about three years before he even ran into Goliath. Three years he had been out there keeping his father's sheep with the anointing of God on his life. Not knowing that God not only anointed him as to be a king, but it was something that God had to show. See, God wants you to know, and he wants the world to know, I have anointed you. I have placed my powers upon you. And let me tell you something else, sir. God placed his power upon David. David didn't know that the day that his father told him, he said, I want you to go to the land of battlefield. I want you to see how your brothers are doing. You see, God is set not the test for his anointed servant to be shown to the whole world. See, God want everybody to know who he is first, and then God want them to know who you are. God want them to know that he's the one that's causing you to have what you have today. And the world can't see it if we stay in the shepherd field. After a while, we got to come out into the open, into the battlefield where everybody can see us. And the Bible says that when David came to check upon his brothers, that Goliath appeared. And the Bible says that when Goliath appeared, he came with the same kind of verbal threats and insults that he had been saying for 40 days and 40 nights. And here come David. Uh, it, it reminds me of the story where the Bible talks about Jesus after he got baptized and, and the burden came upon his life. The Bible says he was led of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. I'm going to take you right to the enemy himself. You see the thing is about it, we want to run from our problem. God said, I'm going to bring you right there where it is. How would you fear anything? How would you be afraid of anything? I'm going to take you right where the thing is that you're afraid of, the thing that you're running from. God said, I'm going to take you right there to the problem. He took Jesus in the wilderness right to the devil. And the Bible said, he was led right there. I'm going to tell you something. God wants to get all your fears out of your life. And you can't get those fears out of your life as long as you're running from the problem, running from the situation, always feeling fearful, always feeling depressed, always feeling discouraged. You got to face up to that thing that you are afraid of. You got to face up to it. I don't care. Maybe the, the devil think that he got something on you, but I'm here to tell you he ain't got nothing on you. So here come David, and bring his brother something, and he hears Goliath's insults, he hears all his threats. And the thing about it that if you look at the reaction of David, and you look at the reactions of the spiritual warriors of Israel, you say, how could this boy 
get angry at what the giant is saying and the experienced warriors are running in fear from this man. See, that's a, that's a different spirit on David. It's not a spirit of fear, but it's a spirit of power. Huh? It's a different spirit on him. When he hears things against God, it arouses something up in him. It doesn't cause him to get fearful. It causes him to get angry. It causes him to get a righteous anger. You, you, you're talking about my God. And you're talking about his people. You know, you, when you hear people say things about your God, and when you hear people say something about God's people, you should get angry. When the, when the devil comes to you and says, God won't do it for you, you should get angry. When the devil tells you it's all over, you should get angry. I'm here to tell you, you can't fight nice. You can't fight on, on sweet and kind. You got to get angry. You got to get bold. You got to get serious about this battle that you're going to face. Because if you get all nice and weak, the devil will use you and whoop all over you. But God called us to be bold soldiers in his army. David got mad, got angry. Goliath talking all this trash against, against God and, and against God's people. And he said, who does this fellow think he is? He's uncircumcised Philistine. Who, who do he think that he is? That's how you should speak when the devil talks about you ain't going to get here. Who do we think yeah. That's how you should speak when the devil says, I ain't going to bring no peace in y'all. Who oh, do you think you are? I just want the devil say, when he comes to you and tell you, I got your child on drugs. Who oh, do he think he's talking to? You should get up angry. A righteous angry. Yeah, nothing going to, you will never get another child. You will never come out of this situation. Who oh, do he think he's talking to? You should get angry. You should be mad. But I got to tell man, you got a fight on your head. I'm not going to just take what you say and walk away with it. Who oh, do you think you are? See, David shows us the spirit that you have to have if you're going to do battle in God's name. You can't do battle in God's name being old, I can't call it now because it's like being, you know, one of the things. But you got to be a man. Oh, you got to be a woman. You got to be bold. It, it, it amazes me how many men run and how many women run from their problems, from their situation. They still stand up there and say, Who oh, do you think you talking to? Who do you think you are? You understand? This is the kind of spirit David wants us to have. He wants us to have this kind of spirit because if we got this kind of spirit, we will fight. And we will fight with sincere boldness. We will fight with courage. Right, you know what? The devil comes in my house and he tries to destroy my house. But guess what I say? I say, who do you think you talking to? The devil comes into my life and he brings all kinds of situations in my life. I say, who do you think you messing with? I know who I believed. I know who I serve. I know who my God is. I know what his promise is says to me. You know what I'm saying? You got to have that fight spirit within you. He, he didn't, hadn't been there 40 days. He hadn't been there 40 nights. He hadn't heard it for 40 days. He hadn't heard it for 40 nights. He just heard it that day. That one day got him so loud. He said, I'm ready to fight this fella. Somebody say, look, <coughs> King Saul had to Gave out a great reward. Anybody, anyone. I used to wonder why God didn't anoint Eliab, David's oldest brother. I used to wonder why God didn't anoint him. Then God showed me. He said, right here, I saw his heart. Eliab didn't have a heart after God. He had a heart of flesh, a heart full of fear, a heart of jealousy. He, he, he couldn't fight for me when it came time for him to stand for God. He would have ran. He would have been like the highland. He would have left God's people. But God knew David. He knew that David had the kind of heart of a man that he was looking for. And the Bible tells me this. He said, he got married with David. But David said, look, I, I, I'm going to fight. I'm ready. 
And it was just like I said, here my Lord, send me. Huh? And the Bible said he went to Saul and he told Saul, he said, look, he said, I have experience in combat. <laughs> I done had many battles. I said, I done fought a lion. He said, I done fought a bear. He said, I'm experienced. He said, I'm qualified to go out and do combat with this enemy. Now, I'm going to tell you something. God ain't going to send you out without training. <laughs> Woo! Lord have mercy. It, it, when you don't do training, you look foolish fighting. <laughs> but when you train, you know when to move left or when to move right, when to jab with the right hand and when to jab with the left hand. Huh? You know how to fight. God, God going to train you for the battles that you're going to face in life. You ain't going to go in no battle and don't know what to do. You may not don't want to do what God tells you to do, but you're going to know what to do. The Bible says that there's no qualified for this mortal combat. He said, I've, I've had experience. You know, I, 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 I see them in the news the other day. I was talking about this lion. And they said, when he's full grown, he weighs about 900 pounds. And he stretches out to about, I think he said about almost 10 feet from the top of his palm to the bottom of his uh, feet. And then he scratches out. And I say, wow, I ain't gonna lie to be that tall or even weigh that much. But it, was, it came from some country. And I say, wow. And then I thought about that. Then I thought about the lion. And they were saying, I got some more combat experience. I faced some, some huge lions in my time. And then I thought about a bear. And bears can get. Real tall when they stand up on their two feet. They stand up on their 10, 11 feet tall and they stand up. And they say, I, I had some combat with some, some big fellas. Huh? And some, some folks that most people would feel afraid of. Huh? And most people would run from. He said, I've got experience. Huh? He said, Look at here. Huh? I can whoop him huh? just like I whooped them. Huh? He said, when, uh, when I was keeping my father's sheep, he said, he said, when a lion or a bear would come and would take one of the sheep, he said, I run after him. Huh? I said, boy, this is the wild time to chase an animal that's hungry and really got a meal in his mouth. Now, you've got to be bold, especially to go chasing after a hungry lion and a hungry bear. That, that just showed me the kind of heart that David had. David, David said, he said, it, it just wasn't that. He said, I don't know who delivered me. He didn't say that the club delivered him. He said, the Lord. The living here. You see, you got to realize in your battles who's fighting for you. Oh, yeah, I'm running after the lion, but God is fighting him. Oh, yeah, I'm running after the bear, but God is fighting him. You are just a bear, it's no fight. You are just a lion, it's no fight. But when you got God, put it all the odds become in your favor. And David said that that same God that delivered the bear and the lion. In my hand. He said, he's going to deliver this little Philistine in my hand. And I want to say, it wasn't me. It wasn't the club. He said, but my Lord was fighting the battle for me. He said, I got some experience. See, when you got some experience with God, when it comes to fighting the devil, brother, when you brings this battle, oh, I got some experience in that. When it comes to with his words, oh, I got some experience in that. When it comes to his fears, oh, I got some experience in fighting that. He See, you got to get some experience. You got to go through something. Everybody want a nice, sweet uh, world to work now. Everybody want everything to be in order. No trouble, no problem. Everything's good. But you got to have some trouble in your life. You got to have some situations in your life that will discourage you, that will bother you, that will cause you not to sin. You got to have some experience. Because when that enemy comes again, you say, I got some experience in that. We all had nights when I couldn't sleep. Oh, y'all had times when I would cry. Oh, y'all had times when I was worried. I had times when I prayed, 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 prayed. I had times when I fasted, 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 and fasted. And the devil looked like he was still with it. But after a while, I saw a breakthrough. See, when, when you know God is on the way, and when you know God has promised you something, You'll wait for that breakthrough. You see, David said, I've got some experience in, in waiting on God. You see, there's a lot of God people don't have no experience. I want to give up so fast. They ain't got no experience in waiting. And he said, 
say, bro, look at him. Just wait on God. If he has good courage, wait on him. He'll, he'll, he'll bring it to pass. But you got to have some experience in that. And they say, I got some experience. If I can kill a lion, I got some experience in that. If I can kill a bear, I got some experience in that. I hear them talk to somebody whose marriage has always been good. I say, bro, look at him. I don't want to talk to you. But I say, your marriage has always been good. I do not know it. I can't talk to you. Because you lying somewhere down the line. You ain't telling me it's where everybody got something going on in their marriage. You trying to tell me your children never give you a problem? I don't want to talk to you. Everybody's children give them some kind of a problem. You trying to tell me you go alone all through the day? Don't mess around with you. Don't let them attack you. I don't want to talk to you. I want somebody who got some experience. I want somebody to tell me, man, me and my wife almost got a divorce. What? You a preacher? Oh, yeah. I know I'm a preacher. But the devil attacked me to a point when we thought about getting the divorce. But God said, well, what happened? God came in and God delivered me. Me and my children, I was ready to kick them all out the house. Well, what happened? God still did. And he got them children on the right track. You got that sick. And the doctor told me it was all over me. Yeah, what happened? God came in and he healed me. I want to talk to somebody who got some true experiences in their life. Somebody who's convinced that God can do it. It gives me courage. Makes me feel like I can do it too. All these sanctimonial Oh, Lord Jesus. What? Trying to fake it? No, they ain't making it. Just tell the truth. I ain't making it. I need some help. Huh? I fail. Thank God he picked me up. Huh? I like to hear real people. I like to hear people who tell them the truth. Don't, don't tell me no lie. Don't tell me because you got saved. You ain't never had no problem in your day. You lie. I mean, that's what they gave. Everybody live right. He don't suffer some persecution. That's the word of God. I just tell folks the truth. But the thing is, this is God can take us through. With the help of God, I'll make it. God can do it, and he'll do it in a way you never thought it could be done. Sin after sin. Keep showing up. I think a moment when it shows up again. Huh? Sin after problem, I think I think all this showing up again. Huh? Situation, I think I got through showing up again. Huh? But you know something? If he did it once, he'll do it again. Huh? And one thing about God, he don't keep numbers. He don't tell how many times. I'm so glad he got a memory of forgiveness, ain't you? Woo! I mean, Lord, give me from that last. Forgive me. Don't do me. Don't mean to do that. Don't let me say that. Then let that God excuse me. Woo! Don't mean to let that get off. Please. I hope I ain't ran out. You get these so many slips in it. You have to use them all up, all your, all your passages, all your mulligans. You ain't got no more mulligans now, bro. You can't do it all again. Huh? Boy, look at you. I'm so glad he ain't got so many mulligans and he ain't got so many passages. But he's a God that's unmerciful God. He says mercy endures forever. Woo! And when he forgives, he forgets. Because, boy, he, he said, well, what did you eat yesterday? I have to lie again. Oh, no, 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 but I'm going to that forgiveness. Huh? <laughs> but he forgives and he forgets. Woo! Because I'm coming back, bro. Yeah, boy, I know how some folks do. You come back to them a, a second time, and then, man, they can't use nothing. You was there yesterday with the same thing. Actually, for the same thing. But, boy, look at here. God don't have bridges to burn. Huh? He don't have short sticks and long sticks. Huh? Huh? All God wants you to do is confess your sin, and he's faithful and just to forgive your sin, and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. They say, I, I got so much experience. But one thing David also is showing us is that you can't fight without courage. 
If you ain't got no courage, if you ain't got no determination to win, you can't fight. You have to have it within you saying, Lord, I want to win. I told people, I say, when I go to those hospitals and I see those, those uh, newborn babies, and especially those, uh, what do you call them, one of the premature babies, I say, one thing I notice about them, no matter how bad it may look on the outside, they got a spirit on the inside that just won't let them quit fighting. They fight to the last breath. Woo! And David is putting this in God's people. He said, look, no, you have a determination. You got to be bold. You got to be courageous. And I want to tell you something about God. God will give you what you need. Moses said this here in Deuteronomy 31. He said, he said, be strong and have a good courage. He said, fear not. Neither be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he is that does go with you. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. But I like this what David says. In song, he said, Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? He said, Lord is stripped of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked eat my enemy and my soul came upon me, eat my flesh, they stumbled and fell. He said, Lord, no hosts should encamp against me. My heart shall not fear. No wall shall not against me. In this will I be what? Confident. You got to be confident. You got to be bold. You have to be determined not to give up, not to give in, not to quit. And then he said, Saul, look here. I can whip this fella. And the first thing Saul gave me was what caused him not to win. He gave him his armor. You know what I'm saying? And see, a lot of times what folks giving you is not what God wants you to have. You got to know what God wants you to have. It may have worked for you, but it ain't for me. <laughs> it may have brought you out, but it ain't going to bring me out. See, Saul knew what his armor do for him, but didn't do that for David. David said, look, I haven't tried this out. I don't know how this works. He said, so he left. He said, but I, I'm sure about what I know. And the Bible said, all he had was his, his shepherd's staff, his slave shot, and his shepherd bag. Now, he's going out against a man with got a spear, got a javelin, got a sword, got a shield, and he's still nine feet tall. And David never considered that. And the thing about it is that when, when he ran out there, Goliath began to tell him what he was going to do to him. He said, come on, man, so I can offer you up to the bird. Let me get rid of this, this battle right quick, and then we'll whip you up and put you on out there. Notice what David countered that with. You see, you can't just let the devil do all the talking. You got to learn how to talk back to the devil. You got to learn how to give the devil what God told you. Every time the devil says something to Jesus, Lord Jesus says, it's written. He always told him what God told him. Huh? You see, the devil will always sound like he got a whole bunch of knowledge, but you go back and you tell him how much you know. And you know about your God. He, he told David, he said, Look, come, on, come on, man, let me just hurry up and, and offer you up and, and get you out the way. Let me just kill you. And, and he cursed him in his God's name. And the Bible said, when David got out there, David said, I'm going to show you the difference between you and me. <laughs> he said, you come in with what you think going to work. You come in with a sword, you come in with a spear, and you come in with a, a, a javelin. You, and you think you going to win. But he said, but I'm going to come to you in the name of the Lord. You see, there's a battle that the world can't see, but yet it's going on. The Bible said a weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. See, there's some things that God has given us that we ain't used. That is one thing. Prayer, the Bible said, prayer of a, a righteous is a very effective thing. Now, brother, look here. There's faith. God said faith can move mountains out of the way. There's the word. His word is sharper than any two-edged sword. It has weapons that God has given us that we can use to fight in this battle. They will say, you use the things that I can see. I'm going to use something that you can't see. But when it get to the whole world, we'll be able to see. I'm here to tell you all, behind every circumstance, there is something that's invisible working. You got to understand that. The Bible says we don't fight against flesh and blood. We fight against principalities and power and spiritual wickedness in high places. When they're acting up, it's not them. 
is what's behind them. How you running to see them is you got to see beyond what you see. And you got to know more than what you know. You got to know God. You got to know what God can do. I see you and you look like you were big. But guess what? I got something that you ain't never heard of. And hey, you can't touch this. Look at here. And as much as you want to defeat me, you can't touch this. Everybody looking. What is he thinking about? When he realized with him, he felt bad because David walked out there with nothing but a slingshot and a bag. And he picked up five smooth stones, which represent grace. I'm here to tell you, every battle I've gone in, the grace of God was on me. I didn't deserve to win. I didn't even know I got out. But I know his grace was sufficient. I know his grace was upon me. Things I'm going out there in the grace of God. God's going to fight for me. God's going to bring this battle for me. You're going to find out something about God that you never knew before. But God's going to show you the battle is the law. It's not mine. You think you're going to fight with spears. But God got a weapon that the devil, if he could, he wouldn't try to block it. But he can't. If he could, he'll stop it, but he can't. But I'm here to tell you, Paul asked the question, if God be for us, who can be against us? David walks out there with nothing but five smooth stones and a slingshot. I see why Goliath got mad with him. How did got mad with him? <coughs> what, man, what you think I am? Hey, we, we, we fighting in the club or something? We don't, we don't battle for you. You know, so, so some, some things, you know, for people's look, when it comes to God and for God to win battles, the enemy has to see what we fight with as being ridiculous. He has to look at us as if he said, you coming at me actually with this? And you really think that this will win you a battle? You don't hear people telling you, say, hold out. Don't give up. Just keep on praying. Sounds ridiculous when you are really stressed out, really down in the bow. But the thing is, when it comes to God fighting the battle, it may seem ridiculous. But the Bible says that God, he, he takes nothing and fight something. <laughs> he, he takes the weak and he puts them up against the strong. He, he takes the foolish and he puts them up against the wise. And the Bible says he does that for a purpose. You know what I'm saying? Because if you figure it out, you won't take the glory. But when you get to a point where you don't know how it's going to come out, you'll give God the glory. The devil looks and he says, this, this is ridiculous. How is they sitting on? Do they, don't they know who I am? I'm, I'm, I'm a champion. I'm a warrior. I'm a, I'm a man who can kill any man. And then they sit on a, a little ruddy kid. They were about 16 years old. And he's coming out here with a staff. And with a slingshot, I got, I got all my good strong, smooth shine. I've been shopping it so I can cut me up somebody. Oh, my shield all shining. I got people out in front bragging about me. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Let's just kill him. Let's kill him. Oh, I'm ready for a good fight. And, and you see this ridiculous little kid out the fight against me. Overwhelming in the eyes. It, it, it makes the devil feel like, boy, this is going to be with it in a, in a little while. Huh? I'm going to knock him out with one punch. I, I, in fact, I might take it easy on him. I might hit him two times. Huh? But to make people think that it's a good fight. You, you know, we you ever pay money for go see a good fight. You expect to get you at least eight rounds out the fight. And you go there in the first hit, bam, it's over. You be mad. Man, I hate to be my money, man. One, one punch in this devil, I, I don't even want to live there no more. You get embarrassed. Hey, Goliath say, hey, how could they do that? How could you even dare send somebody? Now, now, I want you to see the revelation that God is giving us. It don't take that much to defeat your oppressor. It don't take all of that for you to win. God's showing us what you might think that it takes. It won't take nowhere near that. 
Some things in our lives, we think that, oh my goodness, I got to be like Moses. I got to fast 40 days and 40 nights. God said, don't take all that. You see, God's trying to show us just how powerful he is. I want you to understand. I want you to see the power of God. God is giving us a description of how he fights and how his power is and how great he is. God wants you to see this in the battle. And when when David walks out there with just a slingshot and fire rocks, ain't nobody giving him a chance. And that's a little fool going out there with fire rocks against that man. Everybody laughing. But David is not going out there with a slingshot. He's not going out there with a rock. He's going out there in the name of the Lord. That's, that's a weapon that if you will use it in the battle. It doesn't matter what you got with you or how much you got on you, but you need that name. You need the power and authority of that name. You got to have a relationship with that name. You got to know that God. You got to have him as your friend. You got to have him as your Savior, as your Lord. Things, I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord. I'm not coming to you with this slingshot. They're not coming to you with this. These just are something just to fool you, just to make you think. That's all I got. See, the enemy only can see the outside. But God can see your heart. They walked out there with something that Goliath, if he, if he didn't know, he, he, he didn't run so fast, he got out there so quick. But he thought that he had an easy win. Look in ridiculous. Going out there. Look at uh, Je- Joshua going around the walls of Delco. Marching and blowing his heart. Oh, everybody on the wall laughing. What's wrong with these crazy people walking around on the wall? Thinking about we going to fight. And they even got the army. And they're walking around the wall. Look ridiculous, huh? Look at uh, Gideon. Uh, he got 300 men. And he's going up against 185,000. And he ain't even got no one. God said, get, get a candle and, and put a jar over it. And I want you to just, you and your 300 men to go out there with the 185,000. You know, just want you to break your jaw and just holler, just shout. Huh? It looks ridiculous. Huh? Look at uh, Elijah on the wall. Huh? He up there and he's totally surrounded. Him, and it looked like the enemy got him. Huh? And he was just sobbing his friend and said, Lord, he said, do, do you see what we're going to do? And he's speaking like it don't make sense. He said, it got to be more with us than be with them. That's, a, that's some unrevealed power that the world don't know about, but God has given us. And we need to use that power. Let the world know that God is real, that God is living. See, things I want them to know that there is a living God. I want them to know that God is real. How is the world going to know? They don't watch your marriage. If they don't watch your life. If they don't watch your children. If they don't watch how you carry yourself. When probably they don't know there's a living God unless they can see it through you. They said, I'm going to show you there's a living God in Israel. And the Bible says that he, the God made David ran to meet Goliath. And the dude was saying, boy, I don't even see. I'm so glad this day. They said, I'm so glad to fight. I'm so glad to get in the battle with you. Do you say that when you come to your circumstances? that's got you all bogged down. Do you get glad and say, boy, I, 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 I was looking for you to come back again. I was looking for you to try that same thing you whooped me with the first time. I was looking for you to come back and try it on me again. I was looking for you to think you go do the same thing, get the same victory again. You see, I'm, 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 I'm running because I'm glad, because I know what's going to be. Because I'm going to cut your head off. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to feed you to the host. And the, this, this man got five rocks and a slingshot. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to kill you. And I'm going to show you God don't fight with spears and swords. But he fights with his power. And the power of God is what a lot of God's people don't understand. It's an awesome power. It only requires one thing. Your absolute trust in him. If you just trust him, he will fight your battles. He will bring you out. He will get 
teachings he would. If he have your absolute trust. They would say, he got my trust. That's why I'm going out there with just a slingshot and fire rock. Because he got my utter trust in him. I trust him with my life. I trust him with everything I have. I trust him that he's going to do for me what's best for me. They say he have my absolute trust. And the Bible says as he walks out there looking like nothing but got everything on his side. The Bible says that he walks out there and he takes his little slave shot and he gets in a hurry. Let's get, let's, let's get this party started. Hurry to tell him to lie. Tired of all this talking. Let's get through this talking. Let's get in the battle. Let's get in the fight. And the Bible says he slays one stone. Ain't it amazing? Goliath got a helmet on. He got a shield in front of him. He got all kind of armor on him. He will come up down to his feet. He only had a little area, his forehead, which is the hardest part of the head. That's the only thing that's showing. And David is running with a slingshot, and when he lets it loose, see, God wants to see how strong your faith is. Can you imagine, what was David thinking when he threw that stone? Were you really thinking that he would kill Goliath? The what was he actually thinking when he threw that stone? You see, when you actually believe God, you, you do some things that people say, well, what are you thinking is going to happen? But when you actually trust God and have your other faith in God, they say, I believe you're going to die this day. He spoke it first. Then he acted upon his confession. You see, when you speak what you want God to do in your life, Act like God is going to do it. Don't speak it and then get afraid because things don't seem like they're changing right now. Act upon your confession. When you act upon your confession, God moves. God begins to act because he, he has your word and he has your faith, which moves his power. And the Bible says, when that thorn hit him, it didn't just knock him on and bounce off his head. It sunk into his forehead. And he fell down. Something as ridiculous as a stone. Not a spear. Not an arrow. Not to now. David lets us know that with God's help, we can defeat all of our enemies. We can cover all of everything that the devil tries to bring against us. There's nothing too hard for God. He's on our side and he's more than anything that can come against us. I want God's people to be to have faith. Quit giving up. Quit giving in so easily. Fight. Have some fight in you. Let, let, let the world know God is on my side. Uh, He's he gonna, he gonna bring me through this. And the thing is, if you have it in your heart and you confess it with your mouth, it's going to happen. God's word is sure. God's word is true. And God is no liar. There's nothing so great that we can't overcome it. You can't what it is. It can be any situation, anything, any habit, whatever. God is greater. He can bring us out of it. We can overcome. We can defeat the enemy with the help of God. I have hope. I have help. And I have authority. All of this God has placed in my hands. I don't, I don't know no one who got something that's worthwhile. You don't have to struggle and fight to even keep it. Because even after God do things for you, you know how people go from one level to the next level? They meet their challenges and they overcome them. You can't go to another level when every time a challenge comes to you, you give in and you get defeated. Every 
situation. Sometimes financial situation comes up in our life. And because we ain't got the money, we get defeated. But you got to figure out that you got God on your side. And God can make a way to meet these challenges. I, 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 sometimes I sit back and I wonder, I say, how did I get this? How was I able to get by this? How was I able to pay this? Because I didn't run. I just believe God going to make a way. You got to be determined <coughs> that when you see situation that, that overwhelms you, situation that comes up in your life that you say, man, I don't know how I'm going to get through this here. Is God's trying to show you, I'm going to take you to another level. I'm trying to bring you out of that slowful, no can get done, always willing to do this level in your life. So you can do, you can have, you can become. You see, we can always talk. I hate to hear people just talk. What you going to do? Like David said, tired of talking with you because right, let's get this battle on. Some people, all they want to do is talk. I see them like hearing themselves. What are you going to do something? God brings challenges to let us know. It's time for you to move. If you're afraid of, of paying off your bills, then God says, okay, well, I'll keep you in debt. If you're afraid of going to another level in your life, then God says, I'll keep you in the swamp. You want to stay there, stay there. Well, God can take you as much as you can stand. In fact, in a word, he, he said, I'll pour out blessings upon you that you will have room to receive. Have you got there yet? The way you got money that you don't know what to do with? Have you got there yet where you got so much space in your house you, you don't even know in there? <laughs> have you got there yet where you try to figure out where we can go and what we can do? <laughs> have you got there yet? He said he'll do it. And he's the God that can do it. But when you get your challenges, the first thing come up on you. Oh, boy, that's a lot of money. I, 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 I got a deacon in the church who do stuff like that. I ain't even looking at him. I said, but look where you at now. God didn't bring you here so you say, oh, that's a lot of money. God didn't put you in the car so you say, oh, that's a lot of gas. It just gets me. Yes. He'll do it for you. He'll take you there. I tell I tell my buddy Craig, I like what they here. Nobody don't know me from you. We can have a dollar in our pocket, but we walk in the most millionaires. Huh? And feel like we qualified to be there. Craig looked at all them seven years, the place was so long, alone in this market, the hallway, with seven years, probably big as this area here. That's like one chandelier. And it got rows of about 25 in a row. That's how long that hallway was. And Craig said, Woo! I said, Shh. <laughs> I said, Look what the Lord has done for me. That's what I see. I see the most. I look at the Lord today. We're crazy. Woo! I had to grab that boy. I said, what? People going to think we ain't never picked him before. Come on, come on. He went in the room, and the room had an open glass from this corner all the way over there. That's how big it was. Okay, look at that. They said, Woo! Look at this view. I said, what? Come on. Shh. Don't be afraid when God get ready to bring you up. He don't want you to be afraid. He wants you to rejoice. He wants you to be happy about it. My my my, my fellow deacon said he saw the hamburger for seven dollars. He didn't want this. Uh, and he had a hundred dollars about in the pocket. But the, oh! I just I just took the menu and I just. Don't know where he is. 
You don't understand where God has taken you. Don't be afraid. You understand? You know what? If it, 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 he'll do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask or think. The devil want to keep you oppressed. Want to keep you down. Want to keep you depressed. He wants to keep you mad. I'm gonna tell y'all something. Life is very short. You better enjoy it. Better do those things that you think you want to do. Cause why? It's short. And I thank God for the things that He brought me to. God got to take you. I'm gonna tell y'all how God did it for me. In the middle of this mess, because. It was a time in my life when I saw a suit for three hundred dollars. I said, "Woo! I get three for a hundred dollars, and we selling in one suit for three hundred dollars." God said, "Go in there and buy that suit." Man, look at here. You ever see? Is that the law? <laughs> y'all, y'all laugh. But that, he had to move me into a place to where I can buy a $300 suit and it don't matter. I was used to three for a hundred, y'all. <laughs> y'all laugh. I always found them boys. <laughs> and they do this and do it with a $300 suit. That's what I thought. But man, after I brought that suit, then God began to move in my life. He said, I can do things in his life and he won't be afraid. He said, I can take him places and he won't be afraid. He said, I can move him to another level and he won't be afraid. Don't be afraid of the challenges that come to your marriage. Don't be afraid of the challenges that come to your children. Don't, and young people, don't be afraid of the challenges that will come in your life. It's just trying to move you to a higher level. This is God's way of moving you up. So let us stand at this time. Lift hand towards heaven. I don't work, y'all. That's why I ain't tired. <laughs> but that's another level that God's moving me to. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Ah, thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I get jealous if you want to, but God blesses you. <laughs> I like that. See, did you hear? I'm going to get there, too. That's the way God wants you to say it. I'm going to get there, too. Amen. Look out towards heaven. Father, we thank you for your word. We pray, Father, if there's any fears in our lives, circumstances, Troubles, temptations, problems, trial, persecution, any fears in our lives. Lord, we ask that you remove it right now. Replace fear with courage, with boldness, with determination, with a will to win, to overcome. God bless your people to know that there's no problem, there's no situation that they can't win. They can't overcome. Because you are with them to help them. And you give them whatever they need to win that battle. You are such a good God. You always look out for us. You are right there to protect us, to guide us, and to keep us. We would fall if it wasn't for you. We would fail if it wasn't for you. But because of your help, God, and you being in our lives, Give us that victorious spirit. Give us that confidence. Not to always go out moping and complaining and mumbling, but speaking about the good things. Speaking about how you bless us, how you woke us up this morning with our health and with our strength. Thanking you for being saved, filled with your Holy Ghost. Forgiving those things which are behind us. I want a mind to press forward to the mark that you set before us. I can forgive, I can forget, I can, I can do without, I can overcome, I can go through it, all because of you. And because you, God, is the greatest there is, 
and there's none no greater than you. God, I know I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Bless your peoples. Bless them to know the victory is theirs. I feel this morning that there were some who, who felt discouraged, felt down. Lord, move into that heart. Move into that mind. It's not about the number. It's not about the money. It's not about the fame. It's about you. It's all it is, it's you. And if I got you, I got everything that I need. I'm more than a conqueror through him that loved me. And I thank you for your word. I pray that your word will be applied to my life. And from this day forward, no fear is no shame. With fear come much shame. Take away the fear so that I won't have to have any shame. And I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Shake somebody's hand and say, Jesus loves you.